Krishna. From Tompkins Square Park to 26 Second Avenue, Matchless Gifts, New York, New York, Lower East Side, Manhattan. Here we are with Prabhupada and the place where it all began. Yeah. Okay, enough of the funny stuff. Uh, we're going to read from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's Canto for Chapter 21, Text 7. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 7 King Oh my days King Prithu was greater than the greatest soul and was therefore worshipable by everyone. He performed many glorious activities in ruling over the surface of the world and was always magnanimous. <coughs> After achieving such great success and a reputation which spread throughout the universe, he at last obtained the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah. Oh, Bob. <clears throat> A responsible king or chief executive has many responsible duties to attend to in ruling over the citizens. The most important duty of the monarch or the government is to perform various sacrifices as enjoined in the Vedic literatures. The next duty of the king is to see that every citizen executes the prescribed duties for his particular community. It is the king's duty to see that everyone perfectly executes the duties prescribed for the Varna and Ashram divisions of society. Besides that, as exemplified by King Prithu, he must develop the earth for the greatest possible production of food grains. <laughs> it's interesting because being in America, because I'm from England, um, you see a lot, well, with parts that I've seen anyway, been in, there's a lot of fields, a lot of farmers, or what would be farmers, because a lot of them are, I guess, pressured. They've given up their land, and there's a lot of new build homes, like cardboard type homes, but fancy ones being built. And it's interesting, isn't it? So, on the one hand, it's like, control the population and tax them to high heaven and we don't have this as a scarcity mentality and illegal immigrants when they come in they're taking all your food and they're taking your jobs and that but as you can see here it's the responsibility of the leader of the land to first you know to make sure there is production of food grain so first you know make sure the land is being <coughs> used sufficiently for what it's meant to be used for. Beautiful. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and I think, I can't remember if I've said it here, but I mention it a lot that, yeah, it just blows me away how a country the size of America with such vast, open, you know, I think they call it arable land, um, that can be used for agricultural purposes, um, yeah, that food prices are just extortionately expensive here. Uh, people are going hungry or whatever and eating so much processed junk. And Yeah, you just think something, someone's missing something somewhere. Someone's got a different hat on, a different perspective. And it's amazing how Srila Prabhupada, based on the Bhagavatam, is just giving the stuff. Most important duty is to perform sacrifice. Uh, according to the Vedic literature, means one has to <coughs> be religious. One actually has to be spiritually inclined. Next is to see that every citizen executes prescribed duties for his particular community. So they're Varna Ashram. So it means that persons, everyone has something to do, that everyone is engaged, even down to the bulls. You know, the bulls are engaged in, in plowing the fields. and. And therefore, no one is bored or no one is unemployed. No one, 
has time to get into the kind of mischief that goes on, basically, you know. And then um, uh, it is the king's duty to see that everyone perfectly executes duties. Yes, and the last one. Besides that, exemplified by King Pertwee, must develop the earth, as uh, Bhakti was mentioning. Yeah, so three very important things <coughs> that a ruler or leader or king or monarch should do. Powerful. There are different types of great personalities. Some are positive great personalities, some comparative, and some superlative. Interesting. But King Prithu exceeded all of them. He is therefore described as a Mahatamaha, greater than the greatest. Maharaj Prithu was a Kshatriya, and he discharged his Kshatriya duties perfectly. Similarly, Brahmanas, Vaishas, and Shudras can discharge their respective duties perfectly and thus at the ultimate end of life be promoted to the transcendental world, which is called Param Param. Param Param, or the Vaikuntha planets, can be achieved only by devotional service. The impersonal Brahman region is also called Param Param. But unless one is attached to the personality of Godhead, one must again fall down to the material world from the impersonal Padaparam situation. It is said, therefore, Uraya Krishna Param Param Tataha. The impersonalists endeavor very strenuously to achieve the Param Param or impersonal Brahma Jyoti. But unfortunately, being bereft of a relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they come down again to the material world. If one flies in outer space, he can go very high up. But unless he reaches a planet, hmm, that's so nice, he must come down again to earth. Yeah. Similarly, <clears throat> because the impersonalists who reach the Padam Padam of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti do not enter into the Vaikuntha planets. They come down again to this material world and are given shelter in one of the material planets. Although they may attain Brahma Loka or Satya Loka, all such planets are situated in the material world. Wow, so great. Jai Prabhupada. Um, <coughs> just couldn't help but think about this idea of. Uh, you know, if one flies in outer space, and how you were mentioning the other day about these astronauts who are kind of stuck in outer space, mm. and um, unless they find a planet to go to and hang out on, mm -hmm. uh, which you would have thought it would be the moon since they were sending them to the moon, but they can't really go there and hang out uh, for any, you know, they can't start growing vegetables and, mm. you know, find some water or dig a well or something. Supposedly. <coughs> So unless they find a place, mm. <clears throat> they basically got to come back down to earth uh, at some point. So it's really, I haven't heard that analogy given by Prabhupada before with regards to the Brahma Jyoti emerging into the Brahma Jyoti. So very nice. All right, text eight. Sri Sutta Goswami continued, O Shonapa, leader of the... Oh, John Ega, later on, it sounded, seemed a bit like. That's <laughs> getting character. Okay. All right. Oshonika, leader of the great sages. After hearing Maitreya speak about the various activities of King Prithu, the original king who was fully qualified, glorified, and wi widely praised all over the world, Vidura, the great devotee, very submissively worshipped Maitreya Rishi and asked him the following question. Hmm. <coughs> Text 9, Vidura said, My dear Brahmana Maitreya, it is very enlightening to understand that King Prithu was enthroned by the great sages and Brahmanas. All the demigods presented him with innumerable gifts and he also expanded his influence upon personally receiving strength from Lord Vishnu. Thus he greatly developed the earth. Pop 
Because Prithu Maharaj was an empowered incarnation of Lord Vishnu and was naturally a a great Vaishnava devotee of the Lord, all the demigods were pleased with him and presented different gifts to help him in exercising his royal power. And the great sages and saintly persons also joined in his coronation. Thus blessed by them, he ruled over the earth and exploited its resources for the greatest satisfaction of the people in general. This has already been explained in the previous chapters regarding the activities of King Prithu. As will be apparent from the next verse, every executive head of state should follow in the footsteps of Maharaj Prithu in ruling over his kingdom. Regardless of whether the chief executive is a king or president, or whether the government is monarchical or democratic, this process is so perfect that if it is followed, everyone will become happy, and thus it will be very easy for all to execute devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Can you say? You don't really have experience of this, and I, I don't have it in my lifetime anyway, of a selfless leader. <laughs> Maybe some, but not really. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this is very much a. Uh, a build up to the next verse. I was thinking we could uh, we could say that's all for this week, folks, and uh, or today. Thank you. All right. But um, oh. I think we should read on. What do oh. you think? Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, no, yes, no. Should we go? Should we go? Okay. <laughs> all right. We're gonna read. Yay! Text ten. Prithu Maharaj was so great in his activities and magnanimous in his method of ruling that all the kings and demigods on the various planets still follow in his footsteps. All glories to him. Who is there who will not try to hear about his glorious activities? I wish to hear more and more about Prithu Maharaj because his activities are so pious and and auspicious. And yeah, if you think about it, I mean, he's got several chapters in the Bhagavatam, you know, Mm. it's like, yeah, he's Mm. immortalized. Mm. Purport, St. Vidura's purpose in hearing about Prithu Maharaj over and over again was to set an example for ordinary kings and executive heads who should all be inclined to hear repeatedly about Prithu Maharaj's activities in order to also be able to rule over their kingdoms or states very faithfully for the peace and prosperity of the people in general. Fortunately, as the at the present oh sorry. Unfortunately, thank you very much. At the present moment, no one cares to hear about Prithu Maharaj or to follow in his footsteps. Therefore, no nation in the world is either happy or progressive in spiritual understanding, although that is the sole aim and objective of human life. Wow. So basically, Prabhupada is saying that, yeah, uh, Vidura is ecstatic to keep hearing about Prithu Maharaj, uh, coming from a family of kings, coming from the princely class, you know, but he, he's eager to hear and he's eager to hear because he wants all of us to hear. And Prabhupada is saying that leaders should want to hear. They should want to hear of the pastimes of Prithu Maharaj so that they can imbibe that spirit. But as Prabhupada said, unfortunately at the moment, no one is eager to hear about Prithu Maharaj. And thus, there isn't a country at present that is spiritually progressive. There you go. Unfortunate. I also think it's interesting. His Papa says Vidura's purpose in hearing about Prithu Maharaj was to set an example for the king's executive heads. And I was thinking, yeah, because he came 
from such a corrupt, unfortunately, an environment. Not he himself, but his older brother, oldest brother, and his nephews and that. And so for him, it's almost, I feel, let's set this, let's immortalize this or put this out there so that the mistakes of the past, recent past for him, do not get repeated. Let's, this is what you learn from. It's not what unfortunately has happened with all the genocide and all the, you know, the sexual war and everything that occurred to Kunti and everyone. You know, it's almost like, let's set it right. Let's mm. just take the example. Nice. So let's hear nice. about the one, the way rulers should be. Yeah, <laughs> basically. very powerful, important. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that as well, like, what's the word, um, what's it, when things come in order, like this past time and that, chronologically. I was thinking chronologically here, Vidura left before the Kurukshetra War, mm -hmm. but he knew it was coming, yes. and uh, things had gotten so bad that he was actually kicked out of the mm. palace mm. by his nephew. Um, and therefore he went on pilgrimage, he went on walkabouts, and he's having this conversation, and yeah, it's so nice, it's profound, because we have to be thinking that he's hearing all this about Prithu Maharaj, mm. and he's probably at some points like head in hands thinking, mm. you know, why, why couldn't the, the Kurus just get it together, why couldn't they, you know, they and the Pandavas, or why, why didn't Dhritarashtra just put the Pandavas in charge as they should have been. Yes, yeah, so it's really great. I love that because when we think about it personally, what is the time, the place, the circumstance? What is Vidura actually feeling and experiencing mm. in this moment? Mm. You can see, and because he is, you know, saintly Vidura, mm. then he would certainly want things to be done properly and. So he's hoping, well, we couldn't do it. We mm. seem to have screwed it up, but maybe in the future. <laughs> but we see we're pretty far in the future. And, yeah. Well, yeah. Which is why we need to distribute Bhagavatam, which mm. is why we need to keep doing programs like this and fill the airwaves with the messages of the Bhagavat, with the messages of great souls like Prithu Maharaj, like them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Have a beautiful day. And um, please don't forget to give us a little, what is it, a thumbs up or a heart or what is it? A like? A like. Yeah, but how do they like? They click on like. Oh, you click on like. Don't forget to click on like. It's a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up. That's what I was <coughs> It's this uh, uh, icon. <laughs> so don't forget to like. Comment. Subscribe. Share. Okay. Hi, Krishna. <laughs> <laughs>